today we're going to be talking about gaining local online visibility in 2018 and beyond. I wanted to do this webinar on this topic because in my experience, local is something that a lot of companies are just not investing enough in, or they're not thinking about it enough, or they're kind of doing the bare bones minimum and then leaving it be and never really thinking about it and that. And I think it's just something that's overall is very underutilized. So in this presentation, we're going to be talking about, first of all, what is local SEO? Second, we'll be going over local statistics, and hopefully some of these statistics should give you the understanding of why you should be thinking about local SEO. Then we'll be talking about local ranking factors, and we'll specifically be talking about uh, the ranking factors that pertain to local. And then the last portion, and really the meat of this presentation, we'll be talking about methods of local search optimization. So, diving in here, what is local SEO? Uh, essentially, local SEO entails optimizing your brand for better visibility for local audiences. Uh, local businesses really need to think about local SEO to appear for searches that include local modifiers. And lo what I mean by local modifier is basically the city name or the, uh, the region name, state name, uh, some, side of, some sort of geo keyword in there. Uh, many of the characteristics for local SEO overlap with traditional SEO. Uh, but as I mentioned before, we're going to be focusing on what are some of the local factors that are unique to uh, local. So what we'll be talking about mostly towards uh, in a few slides is going to be Google My Business and how the importance of that, um, understanding citations and how you can check your citations across the web. Uh, we'll be talking about the importance of reviews and how you can offset some of the negative press that come from bad reviews. Then we'll, so those are, those top three are kind of your external things. Uh, and then we're going to switch over into your actual website and we'll be talking about on-page signals, so your name, address, phone number, and local keywords. And then the site structure and local markup. So um, as I mentioned before, we'll go over a few local SEO statistics. I could probably spend the better portion of this hour talking about local SEO statistics, uh, but I just wanted to grab a few that are really kind of struck me and I think will be that you guys will realize um, are fairly significant. So 97% of consumers use the internet when researching local products and services. 98% of search engine users end up choosing a business that is on page one of the SERPs. 18% of local searches generate a sale within one day. 82% of smartphone users use search engines when looking for local businesses. And then here at the bottom, this, these two are fairly striking. Uh, 6.2 billion search queries per month have local intent. And this is a, a statistic from actually over a year ago, so my hunch is that number is only increasing. And then mobile searches for where to buy have grown 85% since 2015. A few more here. 50% of consumers who conducted a local search on their phone visited a store within a day. 34% of consumers who conducted a local search on their desktop visited a store within a day. So 50% uh, mobile and 34% desktop. Those are both fairly significant. 78% of local mobile searches result in offline purchases. 71% of people surveyed say they confirmed the location of a business before going for the first time. And then at the bottom here, 7 out of 10 customers visit a business or make an in-store purchase based off information they found online. And finally, 46% of Google searches are local. So hopefully some of these statistics are making you guys realize that local is, if, if it pertains to your business and you're not thinking about it, it's something you should be thinking about. So these are the local ranking factors pulled from Moz. And so this is from actually 2017. I don't think they've updated their local ranking factors for 2018. Uh, and on the left here, you have local ranking factors for the local packs. And then on the right, you have just your organic listing uh, local ranking factors. So uh, as you can see, all the traditional elements of SEO are here. The ones that we're going to be focusing on 
on-page signals with regards to the presence of your name, address, phone number, and local keywords in the titles. Citations. Uh, my business, Google My Business signals, and review signals. So here's where it gets uh, really interesting. So we're going to be talking about local uh, optimizing for local searches and how you would go about doing that. The first thing that we're going to talk about is Google My Business. Hopefully most of you are familiar with what Google My Business is. Uh, if not, it is essentially a, a master dashboard where several different aspects of your, of your local business can be interacted with and changed with regard to the, the listing that you'll get on the SERPs and the knowledge panel that displays. So local paps, maps, knowledge panels, all of this stuff pulls information from a Google My Business listing. So it's verifying and editing business information here is really essential. Um, and one thing that struck me when I was doing research for this is that 56% of local retailers have not claimed their Google My Business listing. And I put this first because, in my opinion, this is one of the lowest hanging fruit items that you can do with regard to increasing your local visibility. It's fairly straightforward. All you really have to do to get started is go in there and claim and verify if you have not done so already, and then Google kind of walks you through that. Uh, some of the benefits of using Google My Business is that businesses that have complete Google My Business information are twice as likely to be considered reputable by consumers. Uh, it's a place where you can read and respond to reviews from customers. Um, you can post photos, business information, uh, any sort of important information that's related to your business, you can post it here. Store hours, address, name, address, phone number, so on and so forth. Another thing with regard to photos is that studies have shown listings with photos receive 42% more requests for driving directions and 35% more clicks to their website. And then one awesome thing is that it's entirely free. So how would you go about optimizing your Google My Business listing? The first thing, first and foremost, is to go in and claim and verify your listing. So there's a link here. It's very straightforward. Just follow that link and Google walks you through the process. It does not take long at all. Some of the things that you really want to make sure are accurate and you have in there is, again, your name, address, phone number, business hours, uh, including quality images. You can include a description of the company up to 750 characters, but keep in mind only 250 will actually display in the knowledge panel. Uh, there is room for putting categories or labels for what your business does. You want to make sure those are filled in. And then you can provide a website, uh, a link to your domain there. Over here on the right is a screen grab of kind of the, the, the dashboard and all the categories within the Google My Business dashboard. So what you want to do is go down through all of these and make sure that all the important information is filled out. A post is another thing that's relatively new. You can post um, different events, sales that are going on, promotions. You can provide links to, your blo uh, to a blog post on your website, things like that. And that will actually display in the knowledge panel. So that's definitely something that you want to be utilizing. And then the last thing about Google My Business is you want to make sure that you're checking in, uh, that you're looking at your listing periodically because let me go back a few slides here. If you see under this next adventure listing, you can, you'll see under the phone number the suggest and edit. And that actually allows people to go in and make changes to your listing. So what, you really want to be paying attention to this every so often and making sure that the uh, information is completely accurate and up to date. So next we'll be talking about citations. So uh, what is a citation? A citation is really anywhere on the web that includes your name, address, and phone number. So this can be on your website, on another website, um, but mostly when we're thinking about citations, we're thinking about uh, data aggregators. And so if you don't have a complete or up-to-date 
Google My Business listing, what Google does is it scrapes data aggregators and it uses the information from those to present in a knowledge panel with regards to your business. So if you have a bunch of incorrect uh, citations, meaning you, like your, your name is incorrect or the address is wrong or the business hours are wrong or the phone number is wrong, it's possible that that information could be wrongly displaying in a knowledge panel. And so, you know, nothing's more frustrating than showing up to a business that you think closed at 7 o'clock when it really closed at 6 o'clock. So uh, essentially, most of these, these data aggregator, aggregators allow you to go in and fairly easily make changes. So uh, definitely something that you want to be thinking about and just checking periodically to make sure that your citations are accurate. Uh, next, we'll be talking about reviews. So I think we all know how important reviews are, but just some statistics to back that, that up is 85% of consumers trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations. 73% of consumers say they trust a local business with positive reviews. 49% say they need at least a four-star rating in order to trust a business. Pretty striking. 97% of consumers read online reviews, read online reviews for local businesses in 2017. Reviews are, are a tricky thing, and um, it, it can be quite damaging when you get just a couple of, of negative reviews. And so one example that I've put in here is this Hanson Orthodontics office out of Las, uh, Las Vegas. So you can see they have 3.2 uh, based off of eight reviews. So in looking at the reviews, they had two one-star reviews, three, uh, one three-star review, and five five-star reviews. So basically what's happening is those two one-star reviews are really pulling them down. And um, another thing I, I forgot to mention was Hanson Orthodontics, they were ranked on page three of the local pack. And I can't remember exactly how many listings show for each page of a local pack, but it's something, it's a lot. I think it's around 20 or so. So they're ranking about 50th. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of different factors at play here, but sort of a loose inference we can make is that their low reviews are pulling them down. So luckily for these folks and for a lot of folks is that because they only have eight reviews, each review that they get afterwards is going to carry a lot of weight. So the recommendation that I would make to these guys is encourage, you know, satisfied customer, encourage customers in general to just leave reviews and then go on there and respond to the negative reviews. Because studies show that if you respond to a negative review, you're increasing the chances that they're either going to remove that or uh, change it to a better rating. Now we'll be talking about uh, what you can do on your website. So the first thing that we'll be talking about, some, kind of the, the, the core traditional elements of SEO are at play here in talking about uh, page titles, meta, description, meta descriptions, headings, and page copy, and including, basically it's as simple as including the local modifiers in all of those. So on this page here, these are kind of just four random queries that I pulled uh, by Shoes Portland, Oregon. You can see that, the, that Portland, Oregon appears in both the title and meta description. Cooking classes San Francisco. Again, you can see San Francisco in the page title and meta description. Uh, same with tool rentals Philadelphia, and except it doesn't look like they're appearing in the meta description, but it is kind of cut off there. And then kitchen appliances Miami. We can see Miami appears in both the page title and meta description. And with regard to, to these four search queries, these were all the number one ranked searches on the SERPs, so, or listings on the SERPs. So it does appear that there's some sort of relationship between having the, the local modifier in both the page and the meta description, and then moving on site using the uh, Kitchen Appliances Miami as an example we can see that Miami appears in their top heading and then three other times, four other times throughout their body copy. And then again, using the example uh, cooking classes San Francisco, we can see that San Francisco appears 
on the screenshot here, we can see it three times, but I couldn't get all the page content on there, so it actually appears six times on the page. So bottom line, including those local modifiers on your titles, descriptions, headings, page copy is very important. The next thing that we're going to talk about, and this is sort of more of a, a creative component when we're thinking about local SEO, is creating content that is tied into your core business and that relates to something unique to the area. So out here in Portland, in this city, and really the Pacific Northwest at large, this region is really known for its outdoors activities. You know, it's, very, it's a very beautiful region. There's mountains and coastline and everything in between which people can explore, and a lot of people flock here to do that. So using Next Adventure, uh, which is a local retail shop that sells outdoors, outdoors goods, so using them as an example, we can see, sorry, I think we can skip that one. We can see what they've done here with regard to their blog content. And so what they have here is a lot of content about different areas of interest in the Northwest. So on the main page of their blog, it has all these different listings about different sort of adventures and backpacking trails and hiking trails and where to camp and where to go kayaking and stuff like that. They review uh, different products of theirs and they, they create a lot of content based off of their core product and then they tie it into uh, a, a huge interest of the Pacific Northwest, which is outdoorsy types of things. And then so looking at some of the keywords that they're ranking for, specifically to their blog, they're getting a ton of rankings based off of this type of content. So this is not something that is going to relate to everyone. Not everybody is going to be able to do this. It's really a matter of getting creative and putting on your creative thinking a cap and identifying where, you know, what are the interests that pertain to my local audience and how can I create content that relates to what I'm based off of that. So one of the last things that we'll be talking about is your site architecture. Uh, there's a couple things that we'll talk about here. The first is utilizing local schema markup. And then we'll talk about ensuring that there's an organized crawl path to all of your individual location pages. So with schema, what you can do with regard to schema markup is it's really effective. And uh, what you can do is mark up different elements on the page, such as your business name, company images, the company logo, the address, phone number, hours of, uh, hours of operation, and more. And uh, what's, what this markup does is it's specifically telling Google that what it is. So it doesn't really have to add, guess at all what, what, we're talk, what, what we're talking about. Um, so, and you really don't have to have any sort of technical know-how. This is actually fairly straightforward to implement. If you go to the Google Structure Data Markup Helper, you can actually uh, enter in the page URL, and then you can just highlight the certain elements that you want to mark up. That will return the code snippet that you need, and all you do is enter that into the head section of your page. And that's it. It's really all, not all that technical. The last thing that we'll talk about is, now this is relating to if you have multiple location pages. So uh, I discovered that a couple of years ago that Home Depot does this really well. And so what we're talking about is basically if you have a store in a different location, um, you want to optimize that page to be as unique as possible. And you want to make sure that there's an organized crawl path on your website to that page. So because uh, I'm signed in up here in Portland, Oregon, and doing a, a branded search for the Home Depot, you can see the organic listing and then six site links that are all related to the stores that are closest to me. And how you achieve this, so really, backing up for a second, this is the goal. When somebody does a branded search, and when they're signed in at a particular location, you want these kind of listings to display. Um, and the way that you do this is, or the way that they've done this, which I think is about perfect, 
is when you go onto their website, uh, you can click on a link that brings you to a store directory. And on the store directory page, it has every single state listed out. And then when you click on that state, it takes you to a page that has every single store within that state. And then you can click on each in individual store and you'll be taken to a page such as the one that's on the right here. And it has all the important information. Uh, it has you know, upcoming workshops, um, different things that they sell at this store that they might sell at other stores. So it's really, it's completely unique from the other Home Depot location pages. So if ever you're wondering about how I should do this or how I should go about organizing a crawl path to individual pages, Home Depot, I think, is a perfect example of a company that's done it really well. And that brings us about to the end. So just to sort of recap what we've talked about in terms of how to really dominate local search, uh, you want to claim and optimize your Google My Business. Uh, your page content, you want to ensure that the local modifiers are included in your titles, descriptions, heading tags, body copy, images. But be careful not to do it. You don't want to just put the city name a million times. Um, ensuring your, your citations are correct across the web. Paying attention to reviews and responding to both positive and negative reviews. Uh, use, utilizing local schema markup and then uh, what we just talked about, site organization, ensure every local page is unique and optimized for each location, and ensuring there's an organized crawl path to every, one of, every single one of those pages. And that's it. So now we will open it up for questions. Okay. So yes, thank you. This is from Stephen. How does a local business figure out how to best budget for local SEO versus regular SEO? Is one more expensive than the other in general? Yeah, well, uh, short answer, I would say that one is not more expensive than the other. And really, figuring out how to budget for so, is it, it comes down to your precise needs. Um, if, you, if you have a heavy local presence, then it's something I would definitely focus on more so than you know, a lot of other traditional SEO factors, even though you really do want to be thinking about the other SEO factors because they do play a role here. Okay, this is from Lucas. Can you elaborate on the importance of site architecture and the effect of crawling on SEO? Yeah, so it really comes down to, thank you, Lucas, for this question. This comes down to, um, Having a, a sound site, site structure and good internal linking so that when crawlers enter your website, they can effectively find all the pages on the website. And so uh, by having that store location page, such as, you know, that I outlined with the Home Depot example, you're, you're easily showing Google the path to these different location pages. So, they don't have to crawl around and try to figure it out themselves. You're kind of just telling them that this is the store locations page, and on this page is all of our locations. So it's just a, a very efficient way of telling Google these are the pages you need to be crawling. Okay, so I got what kinds of businesses should be doing local SEO. Um, this is really any business that has a physical location in a particular area should be thinking about local SEO. That, that is one caveat with regard to local is you, do, you don't have to have a physical location to focus on the, the, the on-site factors. Those are things that you can do. So if you kind of say you operate an e-commerce website, um, and you're largely selling to people within a particular location, you can definitely optimize your website by using local modifiers. Um, if you don't have a physical location, the rule, the rule is that you don't really, you can't really claim a Google My Business listing. Ah, for reviews, why is a 4.2 to 4.5 average rating ideal versus 4.5 and 5.0? Um, I think what that is, is people are more trusting 
to reviews that are not entirely positive. When you see nothing but five-star reviews, there's something internally that goes off in your mind that thinks maybe this is just the company rating themselves in an attempt to just bolster their ratings. I think most of us know that you know there's going to be those customers that are going to be angry and upset and they're going to leave bad reviews and it just happens. So I think it's just a, a thing of a, a trust thing where you you trust seeing a negative review every now and then because not everybody, no matter how good your business is, you're not always going to get satisfied customers. Uh, can I have multiple Google My Business listings for one city? Yes, you can. Yes and no. Um, if you operate multiple locations within one city, then yes, you can. Uh, what you cannot do is if you have one location, say, in, say, we'll, we'll use Los Angeles as an example. Um, LA is kind of a conglomerate of different cities put together. And so you can't have one location in, say, Hollywood and then claim another listing in Long Beach, something like that. It doesn't work like that. You can only claim one My Business listing for one location. What are some strategies that people can use to make their local pages unique? What kind of things help or would be meaningful? Photos, specific location, or neighborhood info? Uh, really good question. <clears throat> I would say really all of those things are at play here. You want to put as much local information as possible. Um, at bare minimum, like I said, you always want to use those local modifiers, such as the name. Uh, and really, I don't think I mentioned this before, the most important is including the city name within the title and then the rest of the body copy. Um, including the address is, is um, recommended, but that's probably more of something you would want to include in the body copy. Um, and then, yes, absolutely, including uh, images that are unique to a specific location is great. Uh, all those kind of things, are they really matter a lot. So really just... Um, including much unique information about the location as possible is recommended. Do you have any good resources for finding local blog topics? Yeah, there's one off the top of my head that I think is, is a really good one, and that's called answerthepublic.com. And what you can do there is you can enter one keyword and it will display, it's kind of essentially like doing keyword research, but they really drill it down to different topics. And then you can add local modifiers in there as well. Rachel, I would definitely check out this one and uh, browse around in there and kind of plug in some keywords with some local modifiers and see what comes out. It's a really fun tool to play around with. All right, well, I guess I will leave it at that. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending. Uh, hopefully you got something positive, positive out of this today. We'll see you next month. Thank you.